Hi, hello, how are you? My name is Helen, and this is What the Redhead Said. This is my very first actual video, but I do have a bookstagram account called What the Redhead Read, where you will find me most days sharing proofs I've received as a bookseller, reviews, a couple of tag challenges, and generally all things kind of book related. So as I expand my empire from photography to video, I thought I would just introduce myself. So my name is Helen and like I said, I am a bookseller. I'm also partway through doing a master's degree on children's literature and books are my thing. If you like books, then come join the party. I have just had a handful of mini eggs. So sugar high is imminent. I have four books on my favourite books ever list. I split them into two categories, which are classic and contemporary. My two classics are Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte and Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. I think both of these are exquisite writing, although we do have to acknowledge that the uh, Racial stereotypes aren't great in Peter Pan, but that's a whole other video on itself. But when I think of my comfort books, my comfort reads, books that have transformed me from reading them as a child and reading them as a teenager into being the 25 year old that I am, um, these are the two that I gravitate towards. For the romance and the feminism Jane Eyre has to always be my number one. I think Rochester is such an interesting character. He's the original tall, dark and handsome brooding figure. Um, and it was also kind of the first sort of gothic book that I read. And now I bloody love gothic literature. Literature? Gothic literature in fiction. Helen, take a deep breath. <laughs> oh. Stunning. In terms of whimsy and fantasy, and I cry every time I read it, has to be Peter Pan. I mean, would you just look at that? So, classics. She's uh, she's reading blue, folks. She's reading in blue. Not voting blue. For my two favourite contemporaries, one is a new acquisition, and one has been a favourite for about ten years. Um. But both are historical, magical realism, which, apart from reading children's books, is my very, very favourite kind of subgenre within subgenre. And they are The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern and ooh, The Winter Garden by Alexandra Bell. Both are stunning editions. This is the Illumicrate version, and this is the Waterstones exclusive. Will you look at that? Um, Let's start with the Night Circus, since this has been my favourite for the longest. Once again, beautiful, beautiful romance. But it's the most exquisite, slow burn, not quite enemies to lovers, but competitors to lovers. Really just extravagant, large scale magic. And I am obsessed with it. And if it if becomes a TV show, I would like to play Pop It Larry. I think The Circus Arrives Without Warning is one of the most magical first sentences in fiction. And I am, um, I'm not backing down on that. So this is a long term fave. New acquisition, as in I read it last month, The Winter Garden by Alexandra Bell. I picked up for two reasons. The first is because it is stunning. I mean, look at that. Look at the beautiful carousel horse. Um, and the second is because it was sort of blurbed for fans of the Night Circus. Well, this I think is much more large scale magic. This feels a bit more intimate because it's so much more about the relationship between two friends. So you've got Beatrice, who used to have a stutter and was the first visitor to this magical garden, um, who turned down her fiancé at the altar and decided that she wants to be a spinster because that keeps 
anyone from taking her massive house and her title away from her and she's a botanist and she can't do that if she's expected to be a married woman and you've got Rosa who is her best friend who then turns out to be her competitor um, later in the book who ends up marrying Beatrice's would-be husband um, and it becomes a very unhappy marriage but she can make these clockwork figures or animals that have their own souls and they take on a life of their own and they end up competing for a single wish from the spider queen and the last of the winter garden's magic and ah oh, i could go on about this forever i might do a whole video on winter garden another time but they are the sort of stalwart kind of literary faves my favorite series is atlanta by diana gavaldon i discovered this uh, in lockdown, I watched the whole series, as in seasons one to five, the whole thing, in a week. I did a series a day, or a season a day, um, and I've now finished book seven, about to move on to book eight. Primarily because, yes, it's historical fiction, but it's very character driven and it is very uh, sexy Scotsman driven. And for that, five stars, Mrs. Gabaldon. Signing off today with a segment that I'm going to be doing in every video, which is, what is the redhead reader? What is the redhead reading? Four books at a time. I am so close to finishing Cold Days. No, it's not called Cold Days. That's the next one. Ghost Story by Jim Butcher, which is book, I think, <laughs> swiftly to 10,000 Doors of January with my Night Circus bookmark. Um, again, picked it up because it's blurred as being a fan of the Night Circus and also because it's got January in the title and I thought it seemed fitting. Um, and this is a proof copy, which is why my cover's a little bit different. Midnight in Everwood by M.A. Cusnier. Um, I started this in December, around Christmas time, because it's a sort of retailer of a nutcracker. The descriptions I found to be gorgeous, and the dialogue is clunky, so I don't know when I'm going to return to it. Hopefully by the end of the month, before it stops being, like, cold enough to feel it's a good book to read. And finally, Comfort Book by Matt Haig. Um, not very far into it I just kind of have it on my bedside table and pick it up and put it down as and when and that's that that's me um I'm hoping to upload about once a week I haven't thought any farther than kind of starting a channel um as far as maintaining one but you can find me in the meantime on Instagram at redheadred and I will see you at some point in the future Thank you.